Cardinal Coffee. Give me some coffee, Jamie. We are back on site. Everybody's back from spring break. Did you have a good time? Woo! Spring break 2022. Wow. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's what I'm are you in college? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was. He went with his family, folks. They'll let him pull you. <laughs> it was with his kids. So we're back, and we didn't have much to do this week, so I called the roofer and told him we were going to do the shingles. And so... Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Back up a couple seconds. What was that? We're, we're gonna. I called the roofer and I told him we wanted to put the shingles on so we'd have um, something to do. No, this week. that's no. I didn't get any phone call asking me if I wanted to do shingles. And exactly why I didn't call you. And now I'm blocked in. Oh, so, this is crap. We're gonna get going. You're gonna hear the word drip edge a lot today. Step flashing, starter shingle, maybe chalk line. Just get ready for those words. This is crap. <laughs> this is crap. Is gonna be the other word. <laughs> this is crap. Yo. This is crap, bro. I see the smile on your face already. You know what's going on. You don't tell us until we get here. You block us in so we can't go anywhere. And then you spring it on that we're doing shingles. Did you know about this? It was Jono's idea. Yeah, no. and where's Jono at? <laughs> that way it beats Jono. me. That's all I gotta say. Jono! Jono! <laughs> The rest of the bad news is that the guy that was supposed to bring the shingles on a boom truck and set them up on the roof got yeah. sick. And now they're just going to bring them on a flatbed. And <laughs> we're going to have to carry them Here we go. up the on. stairs and then hand them up on the roof. So. This is crap. <laughs> we're going to really start now. Our first move is to scaffold up so we can get a walk board at the right height across this whole thing. Get our drip edge on this upper level and our starter row of shingles. We'll show you what that is without having to like lean down towards the edge of this roof while standing on it. There we go, that's what we want. Tony, what's going on? Hello, Looking good. Say something good. <laughs> Take 10, cut. All right, let's talk about roofing. We don't talk a lot about shingles or metal roofing. We usually hire that out, right? Well, today we're gonna do it ourselves. So let's talk about roofing guns, coil nailers. We have a bunch here. I have some Bostitch nailers. I think these are pretty popular and pretty reliable. So uh, of course you gotta have that. Um, I came across this one for a good deal, like 50 bucks or something. The Rigid, I actually really like this gun. I'll probably use this one instead of the Bostitch. Uh, and then Eric's gonna be firing the Dewalt battery-powered roofer. I have never seen one. This is the very first time I've ever touched one of these. This one belongs to Johnny Brook. He was kind enough to let us borrow it. I hate hoses. Yeah. So let's talk about, these are very similar to a siding nailer, like a coil nailer. The few differences, they have a metal tip that's yeah. not, it's not a rubberized. <clears throat> nope. The rubber one would just like wear out instantly. Hey, let's talk about this tip. There's actually more to it. You see these two little round things right here. Those are really hardened steel, or they might even be carbide little inserts because the um, surface of the shingle is really abrasive. You know, it's like little yeah, rocks. Like gravel. And you know, you're rubbing this thing against it thousands of times a day. Anyway, these won't wear down as quickly. And so it'll extend the life of the tip right there. I think this season even has some, yeah, they're a little different. The last thing about these roofing guns is it has this adjustable little stop right here. And I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure you align that with the bottom of your shingle and it accurately makes a gauge or a guide for nailing a certain height from the bottom edge of the shingle. Pretty nice. If, uh, if I'm wrong, somebody can leave a comment down below, but we, yeah, it's adjustable. we think that's what it's for. Never used it though. Nope, not once. These shoot coil nails like this and they're an inch and a quarter, I believe. Not that long, but they don't need to be. Hey, one thing I think we need to do is drink uh, about 12 beers each. I've seen roofers doing that before they get on the roof. Can do. Come yeah, uh, that seems to be the first thing we should do. I'm just kidding, folks. But actually, I'm not kidding. I've seen roofers do that. Jamie's complaining about how much <laughs> the nail guns are like $500 and we have like three that don't work. That's $1,500 of nail guns that don't work. Perfect. So we're putting this drip edge on to get started with. That's a really important step. Usually it covers the edge of your roof sheathing, but in our case, we installed this fascia all the way up. Uh, flush with the top of the roof sheathing, so that doesn't matter. Um, I'm not pressing this in like as hard as I can because they're gonna slip the edge of the gutter under this, so when the water comes off the roof, it doesn't even touch the wood or the whatever your fascia material is. And number three, we're lapping this. We started on this edge, 
and we're lapping it going that way because the prevailing winds are this way. That would help, you know, prevent wind from getting under the edge and flapping this, whatever. We're gonna install everything like that, uh, kind of like a streamlined slipstream aerodynamic kind of idea. That's a lot of, that's that's smart. What's that move? <laughs> It's called pull it and do it again. What do you call that one? Uh, I must have hit another nail. Let's try that again. There we go. That's what you want right there. Perfect. Ray Ray, hey, can I get a left side drip edge? This is uh, for the right side. Buddy, you just gotta spin that one time. They're all the same. Oh, they are? Yeah. Oh, I got, oh man, sorry about that. That was stupid. Jig. <laughs> Never mind, Never Ray. mind, I got it. I figured it out. I got it. So we're lapping our piece going up the roof, across this, just like the shingles lap, you know, starting at the bottom, going up. We're running it all the way past to this face so it completely covers the end, and that's it. I've seen people bend them around, but then it's really hard to lift this up to get the gutter under there. Yeah, Jamie wants to do something stupid like that, but we told him <laughs> no. This thing measures seven and three quarters, so we're gonna chalk a line at seven. Yep. That would be at the bottom seven of the drip edge. The drip edge and it would hang off there. Now you'll notice this tar, that's to stick the first shingle to this, you know, when yeah. this melts and gets hot, right? So that the bottom edge, they're stuck together, right? Why do you need a starter row, like, in general, period? Well, you could just cut part of a regular shingle off, but it would be a whole lot of work, and these have factory straight edges, and you have this tar strip. Like, if you wanted to take this portion of a sh uh, regular shingle and use it, you would cut off the exposure part and just or, use or the you top would, part. You would need to if you wanted to have this tar strip in the yeah. right place. Um, and then you would have a cut edge. You would have to cut perfectly straight lines. It'd be, it'd be too much work. These are just like so easy. I don't know why you wouldn't buy them. Uh, maybe there's reasons. Well, all that talking and you didn't say the real reason yet. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. That the first row shingles, if this was the first row and you butted another one here, if water got between them, it's on the roof. So you need a layer below that to where the joint on the first row yeah, is yeah. on top of another shingle. Yeah, yeah. No, I was, that, about, I was about to say that. No, I wasn't. I, I didn't know. I didn't even know what you're talking I about. I got it. But no, that's right. Again, why we don't do shingles, people? Man, I can't wait to see what real roofers have to say about this video. Oh, they're going to say something. Oh, Just read the comments, folks, if you want to know how to really do this. By the way, I'm going to skip the comments on this video. I'm going to exclude <laughs> myself from uh, reading the comments like I normally do. Get her nice and tight. I'm going to push down. Very important step, we're cutting six inches off our starter strip shingle so that it doesn't break in the same place as our first real shingle that we're putting on top. Are you going to the X Games later? <laughs> Probably gonna do some backflips on your snowboard. <laughs> you got these for me. I know. Somebody got them for me. I don't know who they got. I don't know you look tough. Maybe the Generation X game. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, starter strip up this edge too, like a starter row. What? Well, it gives us the exact three-quarter overhang, like straight edge, something to mark to, or use our hook blade to cut perfectly straight. And it's got that, you know, bit of tar to stick that edge. <laughs> All right, you're gonna get me pointed so bad. <laughs> I don't know if you have to do this. Like, you'll find out in the comments really quick whether you have to do this or not. I don't think you have to do it, but I like to do it. It just gives you that, like, you know, hard, straight edge, like a positive stop for your blade. Okay, sounds good. Friday? Friday what? Insulation. Yeah, we just got to get this thing roofed. We got it. Hey, are those shingles wet? They feel like dead fish. They're always wet. They're always heavy, too. I don't know why people like make this challenge to see how many bundles of shingles they can carry at one time. Yeah. Have you heard of that? No. People try to carry like two or four. I would never four try that. You know what I like to do? I cut them open and carry a half a bundle at no, a time. No, seriously, that's where it's at. I'm not even kidding, dude. Come you on. think I'm kidding? Hey, call me a wuss. I don't care. Y'all can all call me a wuss. I'm sure a lot of you guys might be wondering why we're not putting a roofing felt down before the shingles. And that's because we use the zip system panels, which have a moisture barrier liquid applied to them, and you tape the joints, and it works the same as putting down roofing felt. Our shingles are pinnacle, pristine. We're not sponsored by them at all by Atlas. The reason I like them, though, is the inch and a half sweet spot 
nailing area, which means that it has a doubled up area that's wider than normal, so you can't miss it. And that helps the shingles not blow off the roof if your nails don't blow through the shingles. Shingles get you in the eye? Yeah. Yeah, looks like you got knocked out. <laughs> you should see the shingle though. <laughs> yeah, right. I put it on that thing. Let's take just a second to thank our sponsor for today's video, Masterworks. And as you can see, I'm standing on a roof and it happens to be under construction. This roof is made out of a couple different layers. We have roof sheathing down here and then it's sealed up with this zip tape. Then we've got shingles going on all the way up to our ridge and our ridge cap shingles. So it has many layers that help to protect the home from rain or storms. Uh, just like this roof protects the home, diversifying your portfolio by putting your money in lots of different areas that it can grow is a great way to protect yourself from inflation. Make sure your money is safe. I'm on my friend Susanna's roof, by the way, and we're putting an addition on her house. Um, so anyways, Masterworks, our sponsor, they offer a really unique way for you to diversify your portfolio by investing in fine art. And they're talking about multi-million dollar paintings that otherwise people like me would have no chance of owning. And these paintings tend to outpace the stock market in the rate that they grow over the last 20 years, it's been proven. Um, so people like you or me can basically buy part of a Banksy or a Monet. When it sells, you'll get your money back plus whatever it earned. And if you wanna sell your shares before the painting sells, you can sell it in their secondary market. I think it's really cool if it's something you're interested in, make sure to check out the special link in our description below. And they usually have a waiting list, but if you click my link, you can skip that waiting list and get right in. Thanks again to Masterworks for sponsoring our video, and I'm gonna get uh, back to work. All right, so we're trying to figure out what two teams are gonna be. So instead of just picking them, figured we'd let the cards do the talking. So I got two black, two red. So we're just gonna draw cards and see what the teams are. We got... I'm waiting until everybody else. No, you, oh, yeah. no, you got to oh. hold. No, you got to. Okay. I'm black. Ahead, Wait, what is this? I just go, if you mean? get a black, that means you're with him. If you get a red, it means you're with a different team. Okay. Okay. All right, this is like. Oh, uh, no, if you get black, it's you and Eric. <laughs> <laughs> this is scary. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> well, here we go. Me All and right, Eric. All right. All right. I'm calling uh, East Coast. Are you ready to roof? Yeah, I think so. I'm not saying we're gonna lose, but if we do lose, it's because Jono's over there too. Yeah. And I spread their shingles out, and they got a walk board. Yeah, I know. They got all the things going on. So, they got tons of stuff going for them. You know. We're gonna pause for just a second, even though they're not, they're gonna cheat right now, to show you the starting stagger we're doing of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different lengths. Uh, we start with a 42 inch shingle and then cut back six inches each time. And that makes us miss, uh, you know, breaking on all these nails and it doesn't have any waste. We only cut the first one, two, three, and these were all the off cuts from the rest of them. That's sticky already. <laughs> so now we're going to run these and then we'll start over with that and do that again. So one more thing, um, to align these shingles, to keep them running straight, I'm doing what we, I don't know why we called it this, but this is what we called it back in the day of crotching the shingle, okay? There's nothing derogatory kind of thing about that, but these shingles have what I'd call a crotch right here. See that? See that line? Mm -hmm. And we're aligning the shingle above bottom with that crotch, we called crotching it. So we're gonna do uh, all these rows like this, and the next row we'll snap a chalk line to make sure we're you know right on track before we go again. So we got Davy Crotchet hard at work over here. <laughs> you got it there, but oh, I got it like, like Davy Crockett. Davy, Davy Crotchet, Davey, Crotchet <laughs> king of the roofing. Davy, Davy Crockett, king of the wild frontier. Hey, look at this. The way the nails work out, the shingles get double nailed. You nail this shingle, then when you nail the next course of shingles, you nail it again. And a lot of people will be tempted to nail too high, but if you do, you're gonna miss the shingle below. Number one. And number two, you're not going to nail through this like doubled up area. They call it so the sweet spot. The sweet spot. You, you got to hit the seat, sweet spot when you're when you're Davy Crotchet. You know that's that's the name of the game. We're gonna get so much crap for this. <laughs> yo, Jmo. Yo, are you crotching them? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you got to Davy Crotchet those things. Uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> One more thing about these first few rows is that in a lot of cases in a colder environment than here, you would do ice and water shield that covered the width of your overhang because if you didn't have good insulation and heat came up into your attic 
and melted snow off of your roof up here. Potentially, it could come down and refreeze on this section uh, that was sticking out and didn't have heated space below it. And it could build up, cause an ice dam, and then water could kind of pool up in this area. And shingles don't do good with pooling water, only shedding water. Uh, in this area, we don't really get ice dams. Uh, we are gonna do the ice and water shield in the valley over there anyways, but most houses in this area don't have that unless you're like below a 212 pitch roof and then it's a good idea. Pro tip on these first few rows is to watch out for nails in your starter row. Uh, we were putting five nails in those and they're like 36 inches long and we're doing 42 inch pieces on here. So eventually somewhere there's gonna be a nail that kind of lines up with a joint and that's close enough there. So I'm gonna take another piece of starter I'm gonna center it on my nail there and just cover that up and that way there's not any leak. Nail placement, go. I got a pet peeve about nail placement. On the edge going up the rake end of the roof, we call it on the gable end, sometimes if you're in a hurry, you'll shoot too close to the edge and you'll shoot through the drip edge and it'll pop out the bottom of the part of the drip edge that hangs past the fascia. And if you don't know that you did it, you go on your business, you get done, you look up, you see a bunch of nails yeah, sticking so out the bottom of the drip. Like two and a half inches back from oh. the edge of the shingle is where yeah. it's good. Close to the edge, not too close. It's hard to know exactly where it is unless you measure it. I don't know. Let Jamie nail, you know? That's so, uh, be careful. It's probably hard to tell on camera what's going on here. They've sent Jono over the ridge like four or five times just to check on us. And then Ray keeps calling Jason to try and throw us off. I see you! So, yeah, we're still winning. All right, Johnny Snappleseed, snap me a line. <laughs> Roofing's no joke. No, it's not. Uh, I'm like halfway worn through leather gloves on one half of one side of one roof. And now I'm having to do this like <laughs> split like... Uh, I know, saw that move. I was wondering uh, what you called that thing. Because my, my knees and really actually my foot is shot from being bent like that. I feel like I got turf toe. You know, like NFL stuff. Again, we are going to get ripped <laughs> apart by real roofing. It hurts. So, you know, with a low pitch roof like this, it's easy because you're not sliding. Yeah. But then again, you're bent like way down. But then again, if you got on a steep roof, you would be sliding or have to use walk planks. Then you wouldn't have to bend down. So maybe like a 612 would be perfect yeah. or a seven. But or I don't like, know, that's a little slidey. Or like my couch would be perfect. <laughs> so we ran out of battery, so we gotta go find a battery. But to be totally fair, since they got air, I'm gonna undo their airline so that way they can't shoot anything while we're you know, getting the battery. Well, they should have to come down and do it too, like we're doing. Yeah. I got to get a battery, so... Yeah, yeah, get away from there! You got any pro tips over here? Yeah. Do you? Uh, I really do, but it's it's going to be a long story. Oh. So... Yeah, we don't really do long stories. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is it really a story? Yeah, I got a great story. Okay. You're gonna love it. We'll come back in a minute. All right. They got us, fair and square. Not really, but kind of. They did. <laughs> I think that should. I think that goes to show that an air gun might be better than a battery gun. I'd rather air on the safe side. Okay, all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'd pick it every single time. <laughs> <laughs> I'd pick it every single time. <laughs> what is going on right now? Hand me that hammer, dude. Come on. It's about the perfect temperature today. What is it, 65, 70? I think it's like 55. No, really? Yeah. Well, even at that, we got a few little scuffs on the roof. Nothing too bad. We're not going to replace any shingles. But the hotter it gets, the harder it is to walk across here without marring up the surface. So you definitely don't want to like twist your foot or anything because you would totally rip all the gravel what off. What if it's 90 degrees? I don't know. Well, I have seen some people like pro roofers that actually will start at the top. 
so they can work backwards and not stand on the shingles. They'll never step on it and they have to like lift it up and like nail it underneath and then lay it back down. But I, I imagine like that's pain in the butt. probably really difficult. And you know, when that stuff gets hot, the, the little tack strip there, the tar, it gets sticky. Yeah. I'm sure it's awful. I always recommend people not starting at the top and working down. Yeah, but that does allow them to have like walk boards and stuff nailed to the roof yeah. if it's steep. And that way, you know, they don't have to worry about uh, pulling their brackets out later and yeah. stuff. So there's an advantage there, but I don't know. I don't like it any way you wrap it. Here's the deal, guys. Wear the same clothes tomorrow so we yeah. can film it and it'll look like we did all this in one day. Perfect. Got it? If you do it, you get a king size Reese's. Yeah, you there you go. Smell well Reese's other. cups for everybody. Yeah. Woo! Jamie mentioned that we've hired this out a lot in the last couple of years, the shingling or the roofing. One of the main reasons would be just the liability. If there was a leak or something went wrong, we would have someone to call and run out here and fix it besides us. Yeah, so let's run a scenario. The phone rings, it's the homeowner. Hey, my roof's leaking. What do you do? Hang up. <laughs> you no, must have the wrong number, sorry. I'm just kidding. Um, no, you say, well, I'll call the roofer. I'm gonna call the roofer that did that job. Yep. And he's gonna go check it out and fix it. And he's likely got all of his roofing stuff and whatever he needs in his truck, ladders. He can be like up here with all the right stuff, fixing it quick. Whereas we're gonna have to round up all the stuff because we're on to some other type of work. Don't have all of our roofing stuff. And so that was one of the main reasons. And they're super fast. Like our normal guys, yeah. they would do this in one day total. They would probably get done early and they go would. home smiling. They'd be like sitting around just relaxing by one, one well, o'clock. Well, how long do you think it's going to take us? <laughs> yeah, I bet, ain't going to happen with us. Yeah, I bet we can do it in two days. And, and remember, folks, we are filming this. And we've already been here for like a half hour. And we're talking about nail guns and showing you how we're setting up our scaffolding and not putting up shingles. So that uh, you know, takes extra time. And Jamie only carries half a bundle. Yeah. <laughs> and we're drinking coffee. Spiced with what? Cayenne pepper. Yeah, that's good. Got a little kick to it. So we should really get to work, or it's going to take four days. Guess.